Hi, this is Vicki Gelfort Parnell. I have come to deliver a holy proclamation of war from Heaven's Court. I had a visit from the angel from Angel Gabriel today. It is 1034, and he arrived at around well the journal entry was 3:13 p.m. I had started praying. I was not expecting which I never never know when he's gonna appear. I ask you pray about this, take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. I have I've already prayed twice. This is my third take because being the season we're in, Halloween, if you're not aware of the enemy's tricks, they will try to pro project, project, astral project into any home to cause chaos and havoc. So I had to take care of business. How did it happen? Well, apparently the Lord let it happen. So that Lord being the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep me on my toes. Keep praying. This time, this time of year, you pray a lot. You should be if you're a child of God. Instead of just focusing on Halloween, you should have been praying for the whole month because the whole month is a build-up to the, you know, the, the peak, the, you know, the garbage. All right, let's pray. We'll pray again. Lord Jesus Christ, have your way. I ask you to send this out wherever it needs to go. I ask for you to anoint me. I'm one person and I'm trying to reach all I can. If it's just one person that receives this, then so be it, Lord. My work will be done. Send this out, Holy Spirit, north, south, east, west, wherever it needs to go. Give us ears to hear your truth, Jesus Christ and eyes to see your truth. Give us discernment and wisdom and good judgment. Give us what we need. You said to ask and shall receive. Proverbs talks about seeking wisdom, seeking understanding, good judgment, all throughout Psalms also, Lord God. I ask for these things, and I ask for my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ also. Now, Lord, I've done the programmed all snares, traps, booby traps, all charms, bewitchments, and such like things, and all your existence, understanding, and knowledge. And then I came back after deprogramming. I broke all charms, witchcraft, vex, hex, curses, and such like. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to reiterate. I have my holy armor on. I never take it off. I have the helmet of salvation on, but I also put on the mind of Christ. I have the breastplate of righteousness on. I have the belt of truth and my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And I have the shield of faith in a 360 degree radius around me, like a ball around me. That's how I see it, Lord, when I say I'm raising my shield of faith. Keeping that, actually, I keep it raised up at all times. And I have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. I also put on the cloak of zeal, the cloak of vengeance, and the garment of praise. And I give you praise. And I love you and I adore you, Jesus Christ. Right now I'm going to bind alert, alarm, of any of the enemies trying to set off. For any reason that would go against what I'm trying to do for you, Lord. I bind doubt, unbelief, disbelief, and fear, and such like things in Jesus Christ's name. Any kind of witchcraft, woohoo, garbage trying to be put on this video or any other of the My Lovely Jesus Ministry, or any that may have been put out prior that has my name directly, indirectly, or randomly that has been put out by me, or shared that I have been put out, then Father God, I, I break all witchcraft off of it. Any traps, triggers, booby traps on anybody else that watches or reads the PDFs or such like. I break all the witchcraft off it too, Lord. But Lord, I also want, I hear you. I hear you, Lord. Thank you. In addition, Father God, standing on 2 Corinthians 10, 4. The weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds.
In the name of Jesus Christ, I pull down all deception, lies, veils, illusions, delusions, any type of trickery or mimicry in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Father God, that you would make the voices of the enemy, whether they be physical or spiritual, to stand out and be notably different than your voice. Because it says, we know your voice, Jesus Christ, and we will follow you. Does it say we won't hear their voices? But it says in another they will not follow. So I'm asking you for me, my family, this ministry, for my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ and those to come, to be able some way to distinguish that is evil. Something that lets us know, even though they may copy your voice. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and ask, with no retaliation, backlash, interference, or such like things, ever for this prayer, in Jesus Christ's name, in all your existence and knowledge, Father God. Is there anything else, Father God, you would like me to, to pray? Holy Spirit, bring it to my mind, in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Every type of brain fog, heaviness, the spirit of heaviness, I bind it, and all its sub-demons, you'll not lay heavy on my mind. In Jesus Christ's name, I bind your brain stupors and such like, and your, your brain fogs, and all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Because we have the mind of Christ. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of a sound mind. That's a, that's a promise to his children. Second mm -mm -mm. Timothy one seven, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I deliver this word in fear and trembling. Don't let me speak a word, Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name. That's not from God. I've tried. I've been praying over this, praying over the information. What the proclamation I will share, the other information I'm still praying over. It's private, and show me what to do in Jesus Christ's name. I am one person, but Lord, if I can reach one person, so be it. Holy Spirit, anoint me. Let your fire rise up in me. Father God, let everything I do be pleasing. And I ask everything be done in Jesus Christ's name so you will be glorified. And Holy Spirit, through me, you working in me, let everything I do glorify Jesus Christ. As the book of John tells us, in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Lord, I love you and I praise you. Again, if you hear noises, uh, there is some voices in the other room. A holy proclamation from heaven's court. A holy proclamation of war from heaven's court. Daughter of Zion, I looked up from where I'm praying. To see the angel Gabriel is standing before me. Once again he's dressed in holy radiant armor. I have come to you from heaven's court, daughter of Zion, of faith, of mercy, and love. I am humbled, Gabriel, that Father God would send you once again to someone like me, who is nothing. Daughter of faith of heaven's court, you are wrong. The King of all glory, Jesus Christ, the risen Lamb, paid a great price for you to be redeemed. You are highly treasured, just as all the risen Lamb's children who accepted Him into their hearts. You're right, Gabriel. Father God, Jesus Christ, please forgive me. All is forgiven, my daughter. Now pay heed to Gabriel's words. I will, Jesus Christ, my love. Gabriel, I'm sorry. I, should ha I shouldn't have said that to you either. No, daughter of Zion and of faith, you should not. But you have repented and it is now forgiven. Now I, ha I am here on official business. Now, daughter of Zion and of heaven's court, I hereby give the official proclamation to your world. As the angel Gabriel reaches toward his left side, I realize there is a strap over his head and shoulder 
with a pouch. But he's also but it's also holding by its straps a slender long scroll. Excuse me, I've been doing a lot of praying. A slender long scroll holder. He takes it and it and twists one of the gold end caps the end caps off the scroll holder. Then he tips the open end into his hand. Out comes a rolled scroll. It looks to be a cream color piece of paper. There I can see this one has three small light blue seals on the scroll holding it closed. He breaks them quickly. He breaks them quickly open after he sets a scroll holder on a table that's near us both from where I'm sitting and he is standing. He quickly unrolls the scroll. Here, ye inhabitants of the world, this is the official proclamation from the courts of heaven. The great God Jehovah and his son Jesus Christ have weighed this world in the balance. Each nation, its language, each people separately and together as one have arrived at this point in man's existence. The inhabitants of this world's existence. Time has ticked down. You were given time to repent and few have done, excuse me, and few have done so who remained faithful in their hearts to the Lord God of heaven, the majestic creator and his son, Jesus the Christ. The stroke of midnight has begun its countdown on your world's clock. For time is no more. This is all that remains of what has been given. Gabriel the angel of God holds the cream colored scroll with one hand as he reaches to his side and comes back with a short looking horn that resemble an animal's horn or a shofar. It's trimmed in gold. Holding it still in one hand and the scroll in the other, he sounds a small shofar with seven short blasts that echoes out into the air. There's a feel of finality as I hear it being sounded. The seven ends, daughter of Zion, it's time for the seven to end. When the last stroke of the countdown hits the twelve, your world is at number seven of the twelve. Then he replaces the small shofar looking gold trim horn back into its place, then takes the scroll into both hands once again. I can see the writing looks like it's olive green trimmed in gold. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Hear ye inhabitants of the world, the time has come for the earth's labor pangs to stop and the birth to begin. Here now comes the man of sin's full rise to power, as foretold in the scripture of truth. Here now arrives, without further delay, the creator of all's return of the three days of darkness. Here now is the seasonal time for war to begin for your whole world. This is your holy proclamation from heaven's court of pronounced war for your whole world. It shall reach into every valley, every mountaintop, every nation, every land, every language, and inhabitant remaining shall endure in some form the horrors of war directly and indirectly. This worldwide war shall commence with no more restraints from the God of heaven, the Almighty Jehovah, Yahweh, and Elohim, or his Son, Jesus the Christ. This shall allow for the people of your world and its inhabitants to be deceived by the man of sin and his evil regime's false peace 
as two foretold in the written holy scriptures of truth, given to mankind out of love and mercy. The activation of full-scale war is now and was activating at the sound of the seven holy horn blasts of judgment issued. War will be greater than none ever recorded except for the coming battle soon to come called Armageddon. This is the official declaration, proclamation, and announcement for war upon your world. There will be war of mass destruction as armies fight one another. There will be war between those trying to survive the effects of war and those effects themselves. There will be war between the people as they fight to survive the threat against nature and the many disasters and tragedies still to come. There will be war over food supplies and clean drinking water. War of every known type is now officially loosed and activated, O oh rebellious world, because you failed to repent after many times that mercy's hand was offered and extended to all who would repent of their sins, of their prideful, rebellious, stubborn ways. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Included in this declaration of war is the notification of the risen King Jesus Christ, the commander of the heavenly host, and his redeemed, soon-to-come, warriors of light, his 144,000. You are hereby notified that at the time of your departure, during the three days of darkness in which you will be working to reach the lost and backslidden in their ways, beside some of the hosts of heaven, and Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God himself, your training will begin from heaven immediately following this occurrence. You will be officially in the service of the army of the warriors of light at this time. This is the only training you shall be given, nor will any other be needed, since you will need to train in your now glorified bodies. So don't be deceived. Your training comes from heaven itself, not from this earth full of sin. Hear ye, O world, hear ye inhabitants in the air, land, and sea. You are guilty as a whole world for the sin of idolatry, of pride, of unfaithfulness to your holy God and Creator. You are guilty of denying the Lamb of God's sacrifice and His sovereignty as King of kings and Lord of lords. And you are guilty of refusing to repent even though grace was granted, mercy extended, and love forget forever given to you. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Now the whole world shall see war. Before the seven ends, the clock is on the seven. This world is out of time. You are living mid-stroke of the number seven. O oh, inhabitants of this world, you are urged to repent of your sins now. This is for those the great spirit and Holy Ghost of God is convicting and is for those who shall at a later time choose to accept Jesus Christ into their hearts, even though for most it will literally mean their death. The Lamb of God shall hold each one in his arms as life passes. I watch as the angel Gabriel pauses and begins to roll the scroll back up to fit inside the scroll holder. I have no words to say. With these words, he quickly replaced the tightly wound scroll back into his container. Gabriel 
are you here alone this time? I see no other angels here besides the regular ones sent to guard and protect us. Daughter of Zion and of faith, I am alone this time. With the heavens cleared and under heavens controlled in what you call the upper atmosphere of your world, I was able to slip through easier. The lower levels the dark kingdom is confined to. Being the part with the clouds and your breathable air you breathe in as you live on this earth. That makes sense, but you still have your armor on and your sword with you. Daughter of Zion, the war between the kingdom of the Most High God Jehovah and the kingdom of Lucifer of, Dar Lucifer of Darkness has been raging since Lucifer rebelled and was cast out of heaven with those that fell to sin too. It is wisdom in action to always be ready when one's kingdom is in a constant state of war when aiding the people of the earth. You're right. Thank you, Gabriel, for answering me. You are welcome. Now I must go. Goodbye, Gabriel. And now he is gone. Here are the verses. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 8. Matthew 24, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Isaiah 66, 9. Jeremiah 30, 15. Psalms 68, 11. Revelation 16, 16. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Ezekiel 28, 13 through 19. Luke 1, 19. And Daniel 9, 21. I ask you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer again, as I said. Try and test it. Like my mama used to tell me, don't take no man's word, not even hers. She said, because I'm human and I might lead you astray. Might not intentionally do it. So don't take my word. You go to this word of God. You go, you pray, you study it. You go to the word of God. And that's what I'm telling everyone to do. Don't take my word on anything. You lay it before Jesus Christ and you try and test it. I am not somebody that wants to be lifted up. My desire and my goal and my heart is to be a servant to all. I never wanted to be behind this video. I never wanted my face to be seen. I'm the kind that likes other people to get praise. I am happy working and letting other people get all the credit. If it glorifies God and Jesus Christ. We are called to be servants. Jesus Christ was a servant. But even in this, it talks about you will no longer be called a servant personally to Jesus Christ. If you're obedient and you do His will, if you love me, keep my commandments, you are then called friend, a friend of God, a friend of Jesus Christ. That's what I want to be. I want to know His heart. There's a price and a penalty a penalty as far as um, a price to pay, not a penalty. A price to pay when you start seeking the deeper things of God. So before you step out and start, ask the Lord to reveal to you the cost. You know, there's a song. I forget who it's, who it's about. It's a Christian song, and it's one that the Lord has allowed me to listen to. When I listen to music, I discern each song. There's some singers I listen to, if they have other people sing with them, I will not listen if the Lord says, no, that person's not, you know, but the other songs I will listen to. This song, it's titled, I'll Go Anywhere. And the Lord talked to me. He said, so many people, they'll sing that song and they'll say, yes, Lord, I'll go anywhere. And when they get put in the lion's den or they get put in the fiery furnace, they're yelling at me, why did you put me here? 
make sure. Because if you make a vow to Father God, you better keep it. Everything has a cost. But the rewards. The reward of coming into prayer and the Holy Spirit coming down, the glory of God entering a room is worth it. Picking up this word and praying and, and getting an understanding like I've never had before. Knowing my lovely Jesus Christ. This is Him. The Word of God made into flesh. Jesus Christ was the Word of God made into flesh. I want to know Him in every way possible. If you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord or as your Savior, some people can't call Him Lord. And you're not reading your Bible. You're not studying it. Then how can you know Him when this is part of Him? You want to know Him intimately? So many people, they want to receive the Word. So many people, they want to be in the spotlight. So many people look at the other side of the, the, the fence. You know, it talks about the, the grass is always greener on the other side. Oh, no. What did it take to get that grass green? Did they have to fertilize it? Did they have to treat it for weeds? Did they have to pull weeds? Did they have to work it? Do they have to constantly mow it and keep it trimmed and keep it neat? If you're going to walk with Jesus Christ and Father God in the intimate secret places, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you friends. It'll cost you family. It'll cost you reputation. You'll be called liars. You'll have people constantly trying to tear you down. And they will do it with no, res you know, no respect, no, no qualms about bringing down your family with you, even little kids. Persecution. You've got to choose. Are you all in with Jesus Christ? Or are you going to let these things pull you down? Jesus Christ died for you. And he gave his life and he was whipped and mutilated for you. And he's been pursuing you passionately since the time you were created. The least we can do is pursue him as passionately as we can. Him and Father God. Take that to prayer in Jesus Christ's name. I have not always had this relationship with Jesus Christ and Father God. I have worked in dreams, visions, and things like this off and on. And he talked to me in dreams and visions at times. But I would hear like a word. I would be taken to the word of God for answers. But when he called me to leave everything, I was living in the mountains in Tennessee. In a certain location. And he called me to leave. And I went and moved to where the apartment is. I left it all. I, I, did, I, I brought some stuff, but not much. I left my home. I grew up in, you know, in that area. It was, a, it was a rural area. Very mountain. Had lots of mountains. I've always loved the mountains. And he said, come out of the mountains. Thank you, Jesus. So I did. And I said, okay, Lord, you've called me here. And at that time, I lived totally alone. And he started, you know, 3 in the morning. 3, 3, 3, 30, 3, I think it was 3. Getting me up every morning. Calling me to prayer. 
And it was after, after being faithful and getting up and praying, okay, Lord, you called me here. I said, I want face-to-face conversation. That's what I called it. I want to be able to converse with you. I love you. You're here. I'm here. You've called me here. There's got to be a reason. And I, and I prayed and prayed and fasted and read and prayed. And, and then he started speaking to me. But there was a cost. Friends and family turn away. When you walk close with the Lord, a prophet is not without honor, saving his in his home, own home, in his own town, in his own family, and so he's not going to be accepted. He, she, they're not going to be accepted. That's what the Word of God says. So expect persecution from those you love when you begin stepping out. But don't let it take you down. The last time a word was spoken to me harshly, in what I call trying to give ill-spoken words with the intent to harm, the words that came forth were cutting me down, telling me that I was going to lose everything, that... I had walked away from my family, and I have for the most part, because Jesus Christ told me to cut paths, because I'm seeing results from this ministry of lives being changed, souls being saved, and that's my number one goal. And I'm seeing reports and seeing and hearing from people that are on fire again for the Lord, that are learning. I'm learning. It's I'm still teachable. I, there's so much I want to know from Jesus Christ and Father God. So when I'm being told what I believe is wrong, and when I'm being told that it's all because of the dreams and it's not, The dreams is where the Lord started this ministry. Then I, I'm not going to allow that poison being spewed into me of doubt. And telling me I'm going to lose everything when I've gained it all. I've gained Jesus Christ. And we are told to forsake all and follow him. And that's what I'm doing. He's called us to separate. I'm separating so I can focus full time on Jesus Christ. I'm not looking for a name for myself. I'm not looking for anything but the next soul that I can possibly reach for Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. We've got to reach and snatch as many out of Satan's hands, Lucifer's hands, that we can while we can. So yes, You will be persecuted by those that you love. You will be persecuted by those in their high and mighty manner. Always putting you down. Always saying you're not good enough. Always saying this and that. And that's when you stand up and you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus Christ, you qualify whom you sinned. I didn't sign up for them. I signed up for you. I love you. I need you. I want you. And I want to reach all I can so they can have this love too. And the peace. That's what it's about. There's nothing in this world I want. There's nothing. I don't belong to this world. I have separated from this world. I'm here to do what God wants me to do and then I'm out of here. I do not have any ties to this world. Jesus Christ is what I'm tied to. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. I love all people, even those that despitefully use me. Even those that's tried to discourage me. I've had nothing but discouragement coming from those that profess to love me. 
even some that would stand with me. But yet, I can see now where they're leading me the wrong way. you got to discern and try everything and trust Jesus Christ. You've got to trust Jesus Christ. And you've got to be obedient to what this word says. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. It says, if you do not forsake, whosoever loves mother, father, brother, sister, family, friends, more than me is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? More than your children. More than, no. Anybody you love more than Jesus Christ or Father God is an idol upon your heart. When you understand and learn that the more you love Jesus Christ, the more love you actually have for, for those in your life. It'll make you want to pursue Him even more. I can't explain how it works, but I know the closer I get to Him, His unconditional love is released in me. That's what it is. His unconditional love that is released in me makes me have unconditional love for all people. It's one of His attributes. I understand it, Lord. Thank you. I'm asking you to take this all to Jesus Christ in prayer. I'm to the point, these are things that's happened in the past. Your words don't bother me anymore. When I started seeing the souls being saved, people's words don't bother me anymore. They're, just, they're pointless. My show of faith is up. And the pointless, fiery darts being quenched because it's all about reaching the lost. It's all about doing what we're called to do. It's reaching the lost, reaching the lost, reaching the lost, reaching the lost before it's too late. I love you all. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always. Bye-bye.